everybody. Welcome. Should I get my stuff set up here? I hope you're doing yours. I hope you've got some paints or something that you're gonna play with today. And just enjoy it. So we did our geode treasure box. And that is how that one turned out with all the pretty resin. I love it. I have not sealed the sides yet, but I am going to put it in a mat like this because I like the contrast of this super shiny on the top and then the flat. I did do the inside, so that's resin and glitzed. I have not done the inside of the lid yet. I have to make it thin because this is so thick and heavy. You don't want it flipping when you open your treasure box when they open it. So there's that. And here's the purple one. That's the other jo um, geode box we've been working on. So pretty. And again, I've got the bottom done, but I have not done anything on the top. So what I'm thinking is I have some metal Words. on a piece of metal and they will fit perfectly inside the lid of these treasure boxes and they're encouraging, um, you know, things. So that might be neat to have a little word box uh, up in there with a little design, not much. So, so that's where that's at. Um, this one, we haven't done anything else with my little Pandora box that somebody named Pandora I love. Anyway, that is finished on the inside bottom again, but not the top again. So, geode boxes this weekend. That is what we're going to be working on. So, for now, let's get painting. Some gems would be cool box to put some in. Yes! Yes, that would. This, that would be fabulous. So I want to say something about this opal glitter medium. Um, I don't even know who makes it. Master's Touch. On its behalf, <laughs> I have had this for a while. Even though it still looks pretty clear with the glitter opal sparklies. Oh, maybe you can see that better. Um, it turned yellow. It That glue that's holding all the sparklies together turned yellow. And it turned yellow down at the bottom. So I went ahead and did more white resin over the top of that. It also made this turn yellow and I had to put more white resin over the top of that. So I'm just saying I don't, anytime you use glue, Elmer's glue or a texture paste or anything like that, make sure that when you're resining it, it's not going to have a tendency to turn yellow because that just ruins the whole thing. Everything that was white is now yellow. Um, I have a, so, oh, any artists out there, if you found something that works and doesn't turn yellow, please let me know. So do you see how yellow that is? I've had this for, gosh, five years. Look how yellow, that's horrible. I'm not selling that, there's no way. So lots of rocks, gotta love rocks. But anyway, um, so it's a shame, you know, I can, it's not ruined. I can, you know, sand it down and paint over it and all. It's just nobody wants to waste their time, you know? And if you've got a product that's yellowing on you, just get rid of it. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I will check it out. Hey, Arts Donkey, hello. Hello. Hey, my daughter, uh, Shannon, she figured out that the, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget to tell you guys, that this unicorn spit, you know how bad it stains on your fingernails and all that kind of stuff? Well, if you wash it right off, it doesn't, of course, but anyway, um, she said a dry erase you know, little sponge, the dry erase sponge, whatever that's called, those little erasers, magic erasers. 
okay that will take it off even dried so that's fabulous anyway so thank you Shannon for the tip I'm always looking for that <laughs> Master Touch is Hobby Lobby brand. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. That's the one you said turn yellow. Yes, okay, thank you. Yep. And see, I've used this in other things without the resin thing. It never turned the yellow. So, you know, I don't want to pitch the whole thing because it's very sparkly and pretty, but I certainly don't want to put it under my resin anymore. What we did is we made a um, a little ring holder to kind of match this, and and another one just in case they <laughs> they wanted a bigger one that matches. So I thought that was kind of cool. I really kind of like this one with it, actually. It's so pretty. Isn't that a nice set? It's a beautiful gift. Got to make these guys. Okay, I'm going to get some gloves on. Oh, thank you. They're so fun to do. I'm telling you, I just love making them. And you know, whenever you're resining something, I, I don't measure. I mean, I measure my resin. But, um, wow, I just ripped that one. Um, I just don't measure how much resin I'm gonna to need to do the project, right? So I always have some left over. So those ring holders are a fabulous thing to just set aside next to where you're working and just dump some resin in there. And you can just leave it, you know, let it continue to build over however long you want and just do it in layers if you want. You don't have to pour it all at once. All right, um, before I use my texture paste, I want to do a little bit more. Um, I, can't, I still can't decide if this is daytime or nighttime. To me, it seems more nighttime because that looks more like a moon, but it sure looks bright, so we don't know. We're still deciding. Thanks. All right, Stonky. Thank you. I love that name. All right. So I want some unicorn spit. This is a gel stain. It's not an acrylic. It doesn't have that glue polymer in it. I say this all the time, <laughs> but some people don't know about it. So anyway, it's very concentrated stain. I started using it when I just was working with wood to get that fairy wood look because you dampen the wood which opens the pores of the wood and then you glide whatever crazy colors i mean and they have beautiful beautiful colors um all over your wood and it just seeps in then you wipe it with a damp cloth and you have fairy wood and when you resin it it's incredible so that's why i started using the unicorn spit first then i started painting with it and when you paint with unicorn spit it's reactivated by water so if everything is dry and you really like it and you don't want it to go anywhere then seal it with a spray because you don't want to wipe oil across it it will as soon as it's wet again it starts moving so seal it with the polyurethane minwax or whatever spray you want it has to be oil based um, and then once it's sealed, you can resin over it, or you can just keep painting again, adding another layer on top of that with your unicorn spit and keep doing that as often as you want until you're done. So that's what I do. And you can also mix it in to your acrylics, alcohol inks, whatever texture paste. You can mix it into resin, um, 10% spit to your resin and they have sparkling. It's lemongrass scented and um, jasmine by Essential Oils. So it's non-toxic. So it's a very cool product. I am not a unicorn, a paid unicorn. <laughs> I am not a unicorn. <laughs> I am not a paid spokesperson. I just love their product. So I talk about it a lot. And no, I am not a unicorn. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's all right, donkey. Life. 
<laughs> All right, so black. I'll just use my wax paper as a palette. I just want more definition on my little um, land mass of whatever sort it is. So I'm taking some black and just tapping it in at the bottom. I'll probably go back over it with purple. Purple is one of my favorite shadow colors. I don't know, do you guys have favorite shadow colors? <laughs> favorite brushes, I know everybody has that. Purple is one of my favorites, especially in the unicorn spit. It really reacts interestingly. Anybody else tired out there? Well, I went to bed early, I thought. Just woken up lethargic here. Could be the heat. Though we did have some nice storms. That was nice. So I'm just making this darker down at the bottom of that land. I might build the land up a little bit. I'm not sure. Let me add some yellow. Maybe. We are in Virginia Beach. So I'm tapping some purple and some yellow with the end of this little tiny brush. And when I paint my treasure boxes, there are so many little things. <laughs> detail, detail, detail. And so I like in the background just to give the idea of a tree, a bush, or anything like that. And then save the detail really detailed stuff for the foreground. Otherwise, it's just crazy. <laughs> Takes. Okay, I'm gonna go up a little bit more with some tree-like looking stuff. Just by tapping, tap, tap, tap. That's how I paint, tap, tap, that's it. If I can't get it with tapping, well. <laughs> may not show up. I'm doing the yellow because uh, this moon or sun or whatever is eventually going to be shining over there is what I'm thinking, so we'll see. I think I'll put some yellow in the sand. This is what I do. I just jump from place to place, adding different colors here and there. And I really think the paintings always look better when I've spent my time with all the layers, adding color after color. It almost gives you that really deep look like the oil colors will give. I like that. Aw, who are you? Thank you. You're so talented. Um, um, this one, I've got the inside lid done. Nothing else. <laughs> But I'm basically painting for stock um, to open up our Cape Charles Art Studio in Cape Charles, Virginia. We have our property, but we haven't started breaking ground yet for a brick and mortar. I'm so excited. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. Right now, the prices with the building supplies and everything, no worry, 
I'm not in any hurry. But I am looking forward to it. So what I do is I just paint and stash and paint and stash because it's a very um, tourist place. It's a historical town and it's very tiny, but it's got like 90% is art <laughs> and the other is food. <laughs> the rest is beach. So it's like, <laughs> it's a cool place to have a studio for sure. And we lucked out or were blessed probably more, but um, we got actually the land right next to the welcome center. <laughs> is that a gift or what? and the train museum. So, I'm so excited. Uh, you know, my mama and I, when we painted together, uh, she was the one that taught me years and years ago and she painted with oil. And we had a little studio together. Um, it was Sunrise Studios and we had a blast. But her and I, neither one of us were mm, business minded. <laughs> like, we did not do well. But we had a blast. It was some of the best memories I have of her, that studio. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm just putting white down at the edge again, making it a little bit more crisp of the edge of the water that's gonna roll out onto my sand. Just down there. I might make this back to daylight and I don't know. Uh, let me just start adding some darker purple and blue, make it a nighttime thing maybe. Let's see what the outside, red. Outside's red, <laughs> does this matter? Get some blue. It's funny just not knowing whether it's gonna be daytime or nighttime, but it doesn't matter what I paint. I always have questions in my mind. I don't know, do you guys do that? <laughs> It's like, is this fantasy or is this reality? Is this, you know, dark or light? What kind of emotion do I want to get when I look at this? That's the thing. How do I want people to feel? I'm going with nighttime. And I've just started dropping in darker purple, blue, I'm gonna try not to get too close to that moon with the darker because I I want it just to naturally have a glow about it. Whoops, got up on my corner. A little bit of gray. Welcome, Randall. Aw, I do sell my treasure boxes. I have a Facebook page, it's called Cape Charles Art. It's the same as my YouTube. And um, just look through all the photos there. Um, and if you see anything you like, just message me. And if you want anything in particular, uh, just message me, <laughs> either here or on Facebook. So, um, I have pictures where there's um, some prices on it on Facebook, but most generally I don't price them until someone inquires about it. I mean, I, they're priced in my book, they're just not priced in public. So. Hey Randall, welcome. I'm just bringing this land down a little bit more with more shadow. I want it to be more like the ocean has washed away the, aw, beautiful. Thank you, Randall. I don't even have to look. It was you, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, a small shop. I don't know, hubby, are you still on here? I don't know what size it's supposed to be. Um, he has all the, the details. It will be a interactive studio, not a gallery. There will be lots of fun things going on and classes, all the stuff I love to do. Let's put dark down over here. I don't know why. I'm just trying to figure out what's happening on this side. So I just spread a bunch of dark in there. Just keep putting it in, taking it out. But I love that process. I have to say, there's, you know, in math, you can be so wrong. <laughs> Math is a struggle for me. It always has been. Science as well. However, on the creative part, where you can just do whatever you want and move paint around until something pops up and then you just go with it. Love that. Absolutely love that. That's how I paint. And it's okay. I can't be wrong. I love it. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying your painting like that. Just, just totally get into it. And just let yourself be whoever you are as an artist. Don't limit yourself. I know you are amazing. People are amazing. I, I went around <laughs> on TikTok looking at everybody's lives, just being like, wow. <laughs> it's so cool, because it, it just gives you more to strive for, you know? Not be satisfied with what I'm doing, but, you know, in that sense, to kind of push myself to grow, try more mediums. I love that. And really, the competition is against yourself. We are our worst critic, for sure. But it's a good competition. It's the kind that encourages you to keep going, you know, and to strive for more. It's funny because the longest time I would say I can't paint such and such and I don't do those. And so after a while, I started thinking the only reason I can't is because I don't and I need to start trying. So that's what I did. Everything that I tried to keep saying stop saying I can't and start saying, all right, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> and I was surprised. I actually can do a lot more things than I thought. And I know you guys can too. Be encouraged. Um, I have fail after fail. Um, and I've realized that's all part of the journey it's actually not a fail it's just part of the journey <laughs> it's supposed to happen like that <laughs> so you learn like that the stuff that yellows you know I mean it's disappointing but it's not it's not gonna ruin me <laughs> not yet Let's tap some white across that lower ocean drippy wave. like an idea of something splashing big time over there. Change this brush out. Yes, ask me a question. Sherry Carr, welcome. Um, <laughs> Your
you an editor? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> a book editor? Um, no, if I knew I was going to die one day from now, I'd be doing exactly this, except I'd be sending um, airplane tickets to all my kids to come out and visit, <laughs> to do this with me. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh, oh, you make videos and then edit them. Very cool. This TikTok thing has forced me to get into some of that editing thing. Luckily, um, our son here is an actual professional videographer, photographer. So he does that stuff all the time. <laughs> and I get to pick his brain. So that's nice. Because I'm lost when it comes to that, seriously. But I do, I'm beginning to really enjoy the process of the video part of this art journey and at first it was just a frustration big time but now I'm kind of liking it so it does take a long time though the video editing oh my gosh you can just film something it takes two minutes and then trying to edit it is well, three hours later <laughs> okay I can't tell which way my water's running again. Hold on. Very new. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you. That's that's awesome career right there if you decided to make that your career. I was surprised to hear that people do their own um, shooting and then hire people just to edit. So, because I would think, gosh, as a photographer or something like that, you'd want to do your own editing. But, but some people, I guess, they don't. Oh, it's warm in here. Okay, so I put a bunch of blue. Let me just show you what I'm ruining. <laughs> so I put a bunch of blue, then I put a bunch of white, and now I'm putting a bunch of black gray because I want to take it back down again. It was just too much way over to the right, and I don't want my eyes or somebody's eyes to be looking at a painting and it just keeps going off. And something like that will create that um, in your mind. Your eye will just kind of run off. And it's the same like if you do a horse and it's facing, like say you do, I don't know if you guys know this already, but you say you do a horse and it's facing that way, then put him on this side on one of your primary sections remember how we do the uh, tic-tac-toe lines on your piece that you're working on and wherever those lines uh, meet together cross those are your optimal places for featuring things so if I was gonna paint a horse that's facing that way I would put him over here on this side because you don't want to put him facing that way on this side because your eye automatically just runs him right off the painting. You know what I'm saying? So balance wise, it'd be over here. Uh, it's just interesting things like that, that I've found along the way. I share. You are so sweet. You guys are so nice. Thank you. I appreciate all the likes and the loves. 
Y'all, if you haven't followed Randall, I'm gonna mention him. I don't know if he's still here, but he's working. Um, he paints with oils, and his site on TikTok is Oils by Randall. And he does lives as well. So if you're interested in getting into oils, ever been curious, go grab some and paint with him on his lives because you'll learn a lot. I go there and I, even though I'm painting with acrylics now, I still like to learn how he does his stuff and different techniques that I can now take back to my acrylics. So give, give him a look. There's a whole bunch of awesome artists on here. Just, I mean, start reading down here. We got Art Stonky, this and that. Um, all of you people. Sherry, Shannon. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do now over here. I need to fade this out more, not let that really white breaker water come that far. And then I think I'm going to be okay with that. We'll see. Mm, it's still doing it. <laughs> like, I, like I'm not the one doing it. Hold on. It won't play right. Okay, that's better. Hold on. getting there. When an artist say it's getting there, it just means don't judge me. <laughs> I'm not finished. Go back to my yellows, my bright, happy yellow. So I tapped my little tiny brush into yellow, tapped it onto my trees, and then brought it down into my purple and blue, and it changed into green, which is cool, because that's my little landmass area. So I just love to add colors and tap them all, mush them in together and see what happens. I seldom try to paint a tree. I just paint taps, leaves, and trunks and just tap 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 you'd be surprised what you can do just by doing that instead of doing that you know like the tree trunk or whatever just tap it up because when you do all your different colors start going in and it creates that trunk of bark and everything all by itself you don't have to go back and paint bark it's amazing the tap tap tapping <laughs> i'm telling you guys try it it's just, it's these little, little square brushes. Just tap it straight, tap it angled, tap it every way you want. And that's, that's how it makes the trees, just tap, tap, tapping. Now it's looking like daytime again. <laughs> More white. I'm going really dark up at the very top just for fun. Just to get the feel of it, see what happens. So I paint, see what happens. I do you like that smoky look? Don't know. Keep going. Layer, layer, layer. I'm saying layer, not layer. <laughs> just, just to be clear. I'm 
I'm taking these darks all the way to the bottom, um, all the way to my waterline, that bottom. Basically my brush is dry, I'm just smearing what I can into the clouds to blend all the different highs and lows that I've got, all the highlights and shadows, colors. Just trying to get it to make that moon glow just a little bit more. There's a long ways to go on this. I think about 25 years ago, I would have said, okay, I'm done, but this is really just where it's starting to take shape. Um, from here, I will progress and digress. <laughs> and progress and digress the whole way through. And then suddenly it will work out and I'll know that's it, I'm done. That's how I do it. I don't know how you guys do it, but that's my process. Just keep going until I know I'm done. I can't do anything else. I kinda wanna add a little, a little bit more light coming from the moonish area. Tap some of that super light on the trees and on the water. Just the tops of the trees. I'm gonna have to add shadow because I put really a lot of light in there when I thought it was daytime, but when I turned it to the moon, now I've got like bright yellow, so I will fix that. I do like the moon though just little bits at a time just kind of working all around it um, wherever you your heart takes you to start focusing on just go with that you don't have to finish a part to start a new one if you don't want to if you want to fine <laughs> knock yourself out <laughs> I'll just add some more dark underneath my wave Thank you for the like, Sherry. You guys are great. Digital art, I'm trying to get into that. I got that Procreate, my hubby got me my Mac. <laughs> uh, I Pro, Mac Pro, whatever it's called. Anyway, oh, I just love that. Oh, so fun, but I'm so lost. I just like, don't, there's buttons everywhere and I don't know what anything means. So I'm just going like I do my art journey. I'm just discovering one little thing at a time. And I'm not putting any time frame on my learning, but I am loving it. Just so fun. Good for you. Digital art, that's amazing. So I guess you're part of that, maybe, um, that uh, deviant art. Sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's called deviant art. You can get the app, and then there's like the whole a world of artists out there and like 50% of them are are digital so anyway if you don't know about that uh, check it out because it'd be right up your alley <laughs> I want some more white on my sand not everywhere just here and there in the beginning thanks Randall I 
I don't like the line of my land mass still. Something about it bothers me and I don't know what it is and I personally don't care to know what it is. <laughs> I just want it fixed. So, I mean, have you ever painted and you like know something's wrong but you just don't know what? Uh, my mom used to say, just take your painting and turn it around and hold it up into a mirror and you'll see. And boy, was that true, especially doing portraits, eyeballs, please. Anyway, um, it really works. So if, you, um, if you're struggling with something, hold it in a mirror and you'll be able to see. Boy, that doesn't look right there. I love my mama. Miss her. But it's all good because I'm doing the thing that she loved to do when she was here. Adding a little bit more uh, white to some of this wave action. It's a lot of white on this, but I don't know. We'll see. Get some black. I'm just running some black through that white foam that was coming out towards me. Um, and then I'll put some more white over it. If you've ever done your ocean and it just does what I do, just get more and more white, everything's foam. Put just some dark right on top of it. And then go back and put just a little bit of white on top of that and you'll be able to see that it looks like that foamy water, some is foam, some is clear water, running over wet sand. So if we could just add some dark and go back over it again with a little bit of white, calm down. <laughs> Don't put so much white. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> just the edge of the brush, tipping it in. And it's okay if it picks up some of that black, brown, whatever, because it's, you know, it's rolling. It's an ocean, so it's, there's going to be sand and all the good stuff in there. Little shells. Sherry, were you here when I unveiled the ring holder, the rock one? Thank you. Hey, Shannon. Welcome, honey. Yeah, that mirror thing does work. I shared your secret, <laughs> your tip about the um, magic eraser sponges getting the unicorn spit off. I'm so excited. That was awesome. Okay, so see what I mean? Just by putting that black back in, it thinned out all that water that's running towards you. It's not really black, black, brown, blue, something like that. So that's pretty cool. Happier. Hey, honey. <laughs> Makes my heart happy. See, hi, mama. So this, I don't know if Sherry's here. Um, I gotta fix it, but look at that. It's sea glass in there. Isn't that cool? And rocks. It looks like one of those totally disgusting nougat candies that is so pretty to look at, but nobody actually eats them. Isn't it fabulous? <laughs> I'm in love with it. So, and I think I have a red rhinestone or blue or something that I can just saw this off and put it in there. So that's cool. And then these are the ones that we made for this geode treasure box. 
So that's kind of cool. This one's prettiest. This one matches the outside really nice, but this one matches the inside more. So I don't know. So, and then these were pixies, but I think I hear her in the shower, so I won't unveil them. But my gosh, she did the Tiffany color and she nailed it. Did she not? I want to see them. And she got lots of sparklies in there. <laughs> I'll take a picture. <laughs> oh, it makes it hard. <laughs> I gotta be a good grandma. I'll let her unveil her own. So, oh, aren't they so pretty? I just love it. What time is it? 42. Well, it's been an hour. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to give it a, give it a go. <laughs> Quit for now. Um, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, I really like the way this, this turned out really kind of lacy like that. That's neat. So heads up on this. Be careful of your mediums, your texture mediums that they don't go yellow on you when you resin and I'm still open to hear from anybody um, if you have found a texture medium um, that won't yellow under resin I would love to hear what it is because I'm desperately looking for that so all right you guys thank you for everything thank you so much all oh, Randall for the flowers and Sherry and Shannon for keeping things alive. <laughs> I appreciate you all. Have a beautiful weekend. All right, love and light.